Hey guys, it's Shara from Woodshop Diaries, and today I'm going to show you how I built this flip up top, pull out drawer, keyboard stand. So if you're ready to get building, let's go. bought my husband a new keyboard because he's been wanting to learn how to play the piano. But when I bought it, there were so many options for stands to purchase with it and they all just looked really cheap and flimsy and I really wanted to be able to close up and hide the keyboard when it wasn't in use. And since we live in a studio apartment, I just didn't want this to add any more clutter to the space. So I built him this stand with a flip up top and a pull out drawer that will hide the keyboard when he's not using it and it will open up when he's ready to practice. Now, one thing that this piece is missing is a place to store music books and notes, but I'll be building him a storage bench to go with this shortly, so be sure to subscribe to my channel and stay tuned for that video soon. But for now, if you're ready to see how this stand came together, let's get building. As usual, I'll be sharing the process and tips in this video, but for the exact dimensions, detailed plans, and a materials list, check out the links in the description below. For this build, I wanted to use what I already had in my shop and avoid buying any additional lumber. I've actually had a stack of rough sawn walnut that a friend gave me a while back that I've been holding onto and decided to dig into it for this project. Now, my shop isn't really set up very well to use rough lumber because my planer is pretty small and I don't have a joiner or a hand plane. So you'll see a little later that I had some issues using this wood. That said, if I had to do this over, I would probably opt for plywood or already surface lumber, but it is what it is. So the first thing I did to begin this build was to plane down my rough lumber. Then I brought it to the table saw and cut it down into one and a half inch strips. Since this was all one by material, I needed to laminate these together to make two by twos that I used for the frame. So I glued and clamped two strips together to make enough 2x2s for the legs, sides, and back frame and then set them aside to dry. Now as a side note, I actually built a bed, nightstands, and two different dressers that match the same style and design. I just built them from poplar instead of walnut. So if you're looking for some matching furniture pieces, I will link those below. While the glue was drying on the 2x2s, I went ahead and cut down the pieces that I will use for the back and sides at the top of this stand. I used the table saw to square off the rough edges of my wood and ended up with all the pieces about 6 inches wide. After the glue was good and dry on the 2x2s, I removed the clamps and then trimmed them down to their final length and sanded all of the pieces nice and smooth before assembling. I assembled the frame of this project using wood glue and dowels. However, if I was using a cheaper wood or a plywood, I would probably just use pocket holes and screws to make things easier. You can use whatever type of joinery method that you prefer for this project. I laid out my side panel pieces with a 6 inch board at the top and a 2x2 two two at the bottom and marked where to drill the dowel holes. Then I drilled 3 8 inch dowel holes at all of my marks and assembled with wood glue and 3 8 inch dowels. I made two identical side panels like this making sure to keep the top piece flush to the outside of the legs. You could also install the top piece flush to the inside of the legs if you prefer, but I just like them on the outside for this project. I clamped these side panels in my pipe clamps until the glue was good and dry. Once the side panels were dry, I marked the dowel holes for the back pieces, making sure to label everything well so that I didn't screw up the orientation when I started gluing up. Again, I drilled these dowel holes using my dowel jig and assembled the rest of the frame using wood glue and dowels. I 
I use large pipe clamps to clamp the top and the bottom pieces in place and then I used some corner clamps just to make sure that the side panels stayed square to the back while the glue dried. These glue ups were extremely messy so after everything was dry I gave it all a good sanding to remove all of the glue squeeze out and then decided to add a small detail before working on the top. I mentioned earlier about the nightstands and the dressers that matched this design. I added a small detail at the top of those that I wanted to also add to this piece as well. This is a totally optional detail, but I used a router and a rabbiting bit to make a small rabbit along the top edge of this piece. For the top, this was basically made in two sections, the back piece that stays in place and the front piece that flips open. I picked out three boards to use for the top. The back two I glued together to make a solid panel and the front I set to the side for now. Now, I mentioned I don't really have a good way to flatten rough lumber if it's twisted, so most of the time I just do the best that I can to pick the straightest and flattest boards possible, but in this case I had to use what I had and these were not in great shape. So when I glued them up, the end result was a twisted panel. And after I cut the panel to the final length, I tried to sand to help the problem, but it only helped so much. Now I'm telling you all of this to tell you that I tried to attach this top panel quote unquote properly by using these figure eight tabs that allow for wood movement. But because of the twist, I ended up going back later and adding some corner brackets like you see here just to pull down the twisted corners a little bit better. Honestly, I'm making this for me and I don't really care if the top is quote unquote properly attached. If it develops a crack over time, no one's gonna die from it and it's still going to function perfectly fine. So in this case, I'm taking my chances. Feel free to do your own research and attach your top however you see fit. I actually recommend plywood so that wood movement isn't really a concern, but to each his own. Anyway, it's pretty smooth sailing from here. Now that the stationary top is installed, I move to the flip part. I trimmed my front pieces to the proper length and then marked on the very front piece where I needed to cut a rabbit to match the rest of the desk frame. Then I cut this rabbit on the table saw. I centered the front piece on the top piece and attached with some corner brackets, but after attaching I realized that this was pretty flimsy so I went back and added some wood glue. I checked for square, reattached the corner brackets, and let it cure well. I used some non-mortise hinges to install this flip up piece onto the stationary top like shown here. Since this was going to be used as a keyboard stand, I wanted Danny to be able to set his music book or iPad on the flip top to see while he's playing. So I used some scrap blocks and glued them onto the top at the center. I used a spacer block to get them placed, then removed the spacer block so I could clean up the glue squeeze out before it dried. Now all that's left is adding the pullout tray. Since I installed the sides to the outside of the leg, I needed to attach some spacer blocks to mount the slides onto so the tray will slide in and out. So I cut some plywood scraps and screw them in place on both sides of the desk. Then I attach the slides onto those. For the tray, I cut down some plywood using my rip cut and circular saw and then trimmed it to length on the miter saw. I cut a tray bottom and two small pieces to go on the sides. I just glued and screwed these pieces together to make a tray that would fit the keyboard. Again, all the dimensions can be found in the plans linked below.
Once the tray was together, I removed the front part of the drawer slides and screwed these onto the tray at the bottom edge. Then I installed the tray onto the slides in the desk to make sure everything fit. The last thing I did was use a hole saw to drill a hole in the back side of the desk to run the power cord through for the keyboard. Then I applied three coats of Minwax Helmsman Poly to finish, added a handle, and placed the keyboard inside. And now Danny has a new keyboard and a fancy new stand to play it on. I'm really happy with how this turned out and very happy to have this nice stand versus one of those cheap plastic ones. So if you're ready to build one for yourself, for your own keyboard, or simply to use as a writing desk with a pullout tray, be sure to check out the links below. And if you've enjoyed this video, I would love it if you would subscribe so you don't miss out on what's coming next. And until next time, friends, happy building.